G'day mates. So this review certainly was a challenge. Uh, there's just a lot going on in the world of CPAP with the Philips recall and also ResMed trying to take down my channel earlier in the year with the copyright strikes. It was really important for me just to try and put all that aside so that I could give a fair, unbiased and honest review. And I hope after watching it, that's what you'll think it is, a really honest and fair review. Fair to ResMed, their employees, the people that worked on the product, the people behind the scenes, the businesses selling the product, fair to myself, but most importantly, fair to you guys. I know many of you really value and respect my opinion, so hopefully I haven't let you down. Now, normally when I'm reviewing a CPAP machine, I spend a few nights using the machine before I give my verdict. This time around, I've spent a whole month using the AirSense 11, going through the different settings, trying out the various algorithms, and I have to say, it's been a very enjoyable month. I've slept extremely well. So I'm a fan, a big fan. I'm also a big fan of this device, the AirSense 10, probably the best selling and most popular CPAP machine of all time. But the AirSense 11, old Amy Sue, is smaller, she's lighter, she's got a few more features, so yeah, I like it. All right, I might not always agree with ResMed and some of their business practices. However, at the end of the day, they are the market leaders for a reason. And that reason is they make great CPAP machines and the AirSense 11 is no exception. Did I perhaps expect a little bit more from ResMed? Yeah, I did. I wanted more, I always want more. You know, CPAP's pretty boring, it's the same stuff year in, year out. So I would have loved to have seen some, some new ideas, some new thinking, some new technology and innovation. What we really need, what the industry needs, is like an Elon Musk or a Steve Jobs type character to come in, disrupt the market and really shake things up. Remove the monopoly. <laughs> Someone get on the blower to James Dyson and get him to make a CPAP machine. I think he would make a kick-ass CPAP machine. James, if you're watching, I'm sure you are. Uh, yeah, mate, there's a couple of billion dollars to be made in the CPAP market, and you would own it. Now, to start, I'm gonna compare the AirSense 10 to the new AirSense 11, just to show you what's changed. And then I'm gonna give the AirSense 11 a score out of 10 on certain criteria that I feel personally is important for CPAP users. Okay, let's start with the size and weight. The AirSense 11 is 24% smaller and around 10% lighter than the AirSense 10. Both machines are very similar in noise and both have 27 decibels registered in the manual. The user interface has changed. The AirSense 11 has a nice big color touchscreen and because of this touchscreen, there's no more need for the click wheel. They also have a nice big on off button on the top of the device. The heated tube and humidification is very similar. The tube has changed slightly just to make it a bit easier to clean and it no longer swivels at the back. The water chamber is also a very similar design with the flip top lid and they have changed the heater plate just a little. <coughs> the SD card slots in at the side and the filter is now on the back. Power supply connector has changed. It is a new connector that is similar to the Air Mini but slightly different and the machine still runs on 24 volt DC. There is no longer the auto set for her machine. What ResMed has done is they have combined all their auto algorithms, including the for her, into one device. So now you have three models, one auto set model and two fixed pressure CPAP devices. You have the Elite, which is the premium version and the CPAP, which is the basic version. And that's your three models. And on the inside, the AirSense 11 now has Bluetooth for transfer of data to the My Air app, and also upgrades to the wireless cellular modem for sending your data off to the ResMed AirView cloud. There are some new features available in the My Air app for AirSense 11 users, including care check-in, personal therapy assistant, which is essentially just me in app form, and a new test drive feature which lets you try out different therapy pressure levels. Here's something that's new. ResMed now has remote upgrade availability for the AirSense 11. What this means is they can upgrade your software over time remotely, 
If they develop new features in the coming years, they can add them to your device via these remote upgrades. Now, this does make me a little bit nervous because essentially you're giving ResMed complete control of your device. And as we've seen in the past, that's not always a good thing. The turbine used in the AirSense 11 is the same as that found in the Air Mini. I found that fascinating. It's smaller and lighter, however noisier, compared with the motor used in the AirSense 10. And because of this, they have had to use a lot more sound abatement foam inside the AirSense 11 to get the noise levels down. The foam used is the same as that found in the AirSense 10. Now for the criteria, and this isn't in order of importance. Number one is size and portability, and I've scored it nine out of 10. The dimensions of the AirSense 11 are 94.5 millimeters high, 259.4 width, and 138.5 depth, and it weighs 1,130 grams. In comparison, the F&P Sleep Style weighs 1,700 grams. It is also DC compatible for those of you that love your camping. However, you will need to get the DC converter cable, which is gonna jump up the 12 volt output to 24 volts, which is required to run the device. And the only reason they lost the point, because old mate DS2 here is a little bit lighter. Well done, Phillips. DS2 being 1,040 grams. Criteria number two, CPAP comfort features. And once again, I have scored this device a nine out of 10. Congratulations, ResMed. All right, let's go through some of them. Number one, auto algorithms. Now there's not too many devices that give the user the ability to choose a different algorithm in order to improve the comfort of the therapy. ResMed's one of the only companies that does this. In this device, the AirSense 11, we have three of them. We have the auto set for her, which is specifically designed for women with mild to moderate OSA. We also have the standard algorithm, but that has two response modes with the soft response mode and the standard response mode. The soft response mode providing gentler pressure increases over time. So it's gonna adjust that pressure uh, slower over time. Number two, the climate control. ResMed has excellent heated tube and humidification technology. Their climate control algorithm is also exceptional. You can switch it to auto, you can switch it to manual. It's really cool stuff. They've got the EPR, they had this in the 10 as well, the expiratory pressure relief, which drops the pressure as you breathe out, making the therapy much easier to use. And number four, they've got the auto ramp. And what the auto ramp does is you can set a value that you find comfortable to sleep with when you're first getting off to sleep. The auto ramp is gonna keep that ramp at that value, the most comfortable value, until you fall asleep. It knows when you are sleeping. It knows when you're awake. This device does that. It can tell when you fall asleep because when you fall asleep, your breathing changes. Now, the reason I only gave it a nine is because although they are some fantastic comfort features, there's nothing really new there. Perhaps ResMed can start to do maybe a little bit more with the beginners. Come up with a way to sort of really help those beginners in the early stages acclimatize to the therapy. Maybe like a four week program that sort of helps keep the pressure nice and low and gradually builds them into the therapy as they get better and better and can sleep longer and longer with the therapy. This is a little idea from Uncle Nico. Moving on. Criteria number three and one of my personal favorites, user experience. How enjoyable and easy is it to operate and use night after night? Very important. And once again, I know I'm sounding like a broken record. I gave it a nine out of 10. It's got a lovely big color touchscreen. It's very responsive and very easy to operate. The UI is solid. It's got those nice big icons on it. The menu system, very easy to navigate. The only issue with removing that click wheel, however, is it might be a bit harder for those with vision issues or other disabilities to navigate through the menu. But that being said, having automatic on, automatic off, automatic climate control, and all these other auto functionalities of the device, it's probably not gonna impact it that much. You also have the remote access now, so clinicians can remotely access the device 
and change settings if they want to as well. So probably not a big deal. Perhaps ResMed might consider in the future having some voice control of the device. Hey ResMed, how did I sleep last night? That's got a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Now, it's also got a nice big button on the top, easy to find, on, off, on, off, real simple stuff. The humidifier is easy to remove, open and refill. Uh, I have heard from a few users that they have a little bit of trouble getting their sort of thumb in under the clip and opening it. Perhaps they could have just made a little bit more of a groove there to make it easier to open the lid. Very small thing. Quick drinks break. <laughs> a little cold beer on a Sunday. It's past one o'clock. <laughs> All right, where are we up to? Number four, noise. And this surprised me just a little bit. And I've given them an eight out of 10, very, very respectable eight out of 10. Still very, very quiet. I mean, I had the AirSense 10 there, the AirSense 11, they're both very, very similar. Both manuals say they are 27 decibels. I just think, you know, I wanted to see improvements in the noise especially considering how much sound abatement foam they are using in the AirSense 11. Criteria number five, getting through them now. Reliability, durability, warranty, and repairs. And I've scored them eight out of 10. All right, pretty good. Now, although this machine has only been on the market for a few months, the turbine itself, which is the heart of the device, has been around since 2016, which might be one of the reasons they're using it. It's smaller and lighter, but it's also, they've got enough data there to know that it's a reliable motor. I do have a few concerns that it is such a small turbine. Um, and from my experience with travel CPAP devices, they tend to not last quite as long as those full size units. So I'm not sure how that's gonna play out, but um, time will tell. Now, I know ResMed had some problems with the AirSense 10 with leaky water chambers. It looks like they've addressed those concerns with the new design of the heater plate, and I didn't have any issues while I was using it. The outer shell itself seems fairly strong and durable. Uh, it's a durable design. The touchscreen feels nice and thick. I guess you just have to be a little bit careful with it, like any touchscreen, like a phone. The warranty is two years, which seems pretty standard these days. They say the design life in the manual is five years and it's six months on that humidifier tub and tubing. Now you might recall in another video I did, ResMed wanted to charge me $900 to replace an old ResMed S9 motor. So the maintenance costs are really, really high. And if ResMed gave us the ability to buy replacement motors to fix ourselves, and I would straight up give them a 10 out of 10. There you go. Now, one thing I think all CPAP manufacturers could improve on is the CPAP filter technology to filter out the dust. I'll give you an example. So this AirSense 10, he, uh, this AirSense 11 here, the standard filter on it, probably the same as the AirSense 10, stops on average around 75% of seven micron dust. That's quite large dust particles that it's stopping and it's only stopping on average 75% of those. That's a whole lot of dust that's, that's getting inside the machine. And if you've taken as many CPAP machines apart as I have, you start to realize that the number one problem of CPAP machines is dust. Night after night, it's sucking it all in and eventually it gets into your turbine, starts stuffing around with the bearings and the fans and they just get noisy and eventually pff, kills it. Um, like in comparison, the BMC Luna G3, which is that PM 2.5 filtration system, that really ultra fine system, stops 90% of two micron dust. So three times smaller dust particles and it's stopping a lot more of that dust getting into the device. You could also look at um, you know, antibacterial, antiviral stuff as well. A little tip from yours truly. Moving on, number six, a value for money maintenance costs, and I've given it a seven out of 10. Now, this is a bit of a tricky one, because to be totally honest, I don't even know what the retail price is gonna be, but just being ResMed, you know it's gonna be high. It's gonna be higher than the AirSense 10. They're complaining all the time about supply chain issues and component shortages. Their costs will be going up, so you can guarantee that your costs 
are going up also. It, it'll be double the price of most machines, some machines with similar specifications and features. And for the first time, I'm docking them points as well for the way they charge Aussie customers. The price gouging that goes on here in Australia is absurd, it needs to stop, it's ridiculous. That machine, the AirSense 11, is probably gonna drop here at, I'm just gonna make a guess here, but 2695, that'll be my guess, $2,695. The machine will be half the price in the US and there is absolutely no effing reason for it and it needs to stop because I'm looking out for my, my fellow Aussies. <laughs> God bless you all. But um, maintenance costs themselves, pretty low on CPAP machines. I reckon CPAP machines, apart from that initial cost, the maintenance costs, the ongoing costs, a few cushions, mask cushions and stuff are really, really low. It's cents per night. You spend more on coffee, I guarantee it. So that's just my own personal opinion. Number seven, innovation and technology. This is what I'm passionate about. New ideas, new ways of thinking. Let's break the mold, start again, create something new. And I've scored them maybe a generous seven out of 10 on this. I feel it was a very safe release for ResMed, this AirSense 11. It's essentially an AirSense 10 with a touchscreen and an Air Mini Turbine. There's not a whole lot new about it. And because they've played it safe, the rest of you guys, all you other manufacturers, now's your chance to give us something a bit more exciting. Looking at you, Fisher and Paykel, played it very safe with your sleep style as well. Looked exactly the same. So ResMed has played it safe. Come out with something new and exciting. I'll give you a great review, and then you can take back some of that market share, all right? But let's talk about what ResMed themselves considers to be the highlights of this device. What do ResMed consider to be the highlights? One, integrated cellular communication, data transmission. Okay, fair enough. Two, simple start stop button. <laughs> That's not a highlight. Three, modern design. Okay. Four, integrated heated humidifier. Five, easy to use touchscreen. Yeah. Six, removable water tub. <laughs> Seven, disposable air filter. What are you doing? Eight, heated tubing and nine care check-in, which is part of the app. That's what they consider to be the highlights, all right? Now, any time a company mentions disposable air filter in the highlights section, you are losing points, all right? What? Nothing for you. <laughs> Straight away. And a start-stop button? Start, stop button, that's your highlight? Come on guys, you're better than that. So lost a few points there, but you know I wanna see more next time. Technology might have saved them a little bit from a lower score. That touch screen is certainly a lot better than that found in the DS2. It's much bigger, brighter, more responsive. And Bluetooth was also a welcome addition for data transfer and app functionality. And also the ResMed algorithms. Number eight, design and aesthetics. How it looks on your bedside table. Obviously not the most important criteria when it comes to a CPAP machine, but for some of you, especially if you're an interior designer, you know, it matters. And I bet many of you ladies out there bought that AirSense 10 for her because of the way it looks. And because it says for her. Very clever marketing by ResMed, don't you think? Yeah. Anyway, um, it's very much a personal opinion, obviously. Um, I personally like it. I think it's nice and modern, it's very sleek. I like the colors used uh, on the touch screen, nice and bright to break up that split black and white design. I like the way it looks, very professional. It also doesn't look and feel cheap like the Dream Station too. I think it'd be pretty cool if perhaps you could customize your device a little bit. I know it sounds a little bit corny, but imagine with this faceplate, which does detach, if you could get different colors. And I would love to see a return of the split design. I love the split design where you can just pop off the humidifier section and use it just as a pump, like the Dream Station one. Okay, guys, so we're on the home straight now. Number nine, data and connectivity. Now, I originally scored ResMed a nine out of 10 for this. However, after some healthy, objective discussion on our Facebook group, 
I docked him another point and we ended up with eight out of 10 and I think that's the right score. And it was mainly due to the My Air app. I know a number of people love that app and how it gives you the different scores and everyone's always trying to get to 100. But I do feel it just sort of oversimplifies things a little bit too much. It'd be great to be able to click on each score and get a detailed breakdown of what that score was made up of. Everyone's very interested in their health data these days, aren't they? They're wearing Fitbits and Apples and Garmin's. So I think it's time the manufacturers embrace that and give us a bit more detailed information about our sleep. As I mentioned just before, Resme can now do over the air software updates. So they can upgrade your device over time or completely shut it down if they want you to buy a new one. But ResMed wouldn't do that, would they? <laughs> uh, now ResMed scored big, big brownie points for not encrypting the SD card data so that it's compatible with Oscar. And for those of you that don't know what OSCAR is, it stands for Open Source CPAP Analysis Reporter. It's basically open source software you can download onto your computer and you can read the detailed data that's kept on that SD card. Very important. And those guys have put in a lot of unpaid time into developing that software so that all of you, you know, the users at home, have the ability to read that detailed data and it's really popular and I love it. All right, now, um, if any other manufacturers are thinking of following in Philips's footsteps and encrypting that SD card data, I can tell you right now, I will not be recommending your CPAP machines to anyone on the channel. In fact, I will be discouraging them from buying that machine for that very reason, okay? It's very important and I don't wanna see it happen. So consider that a warning shot across the bow to all of you guys out there. Um, the channel's not that big at the moment, but I can guarantee in a couple of years, there's gonna be a lot of people that uh, won't be buying your CPAP machine if you encrypt that data. So there we go, I'm, I'm serious about that. Uh, number 10. <laughs> Oh dear. Now, you guys can decide whether or not you want to leave this one in or take it out. It doesn't change the overall score of the device that much, but a few people didn't want me to put this one in, but I'm putting it in anyway, because I feel it's important. Company culture and business ethics. I think it's important. I think these days, shoppers want to know if the products they are buying are from good, ethical businesses, don't you? Isn't that important to some of you? Now, if you wanna know where they lost a few points, all you have to do is go back through my video history and you'll find a few examples on why they lost uh, points. No company's perfect, I know that. If it was Philips right now, they would be getting a negative 10. Um, I think seven is, is pretty fair. I've got a few mates that work for ResMed and they say it's, it's a great place to work and the culture's great. Um, and I think overall, you know, they're not too bad. We've got a few little issues they need to work on. And that, my dear friends, is all she wrote. Now, if you add up all of those scores, you end up with 80 out of 100. And personally, I feel that is spot on what me old girl Amy Sue deserves, the AirSense 11, an upgrade on the best-selling AirSense 10 machine, but certainly nothing revolutionary about it and I was certainly hoping for a little bit more innovation, a few new ideas from ResMed. And hopefully next machine, the Air 12, we're gonna see something new and exciting. Now currently, you can't buy the AirSense 11 online. There's just not enough stock available. But when it is available, probably early 2022, I'd really appreciate it if you bought an AirSense 11, if you're thinking about buying one from our sponsor, Sleeplay, over in the US. Uh, if you guys mention that you're from the YouTube channel, CPAP Reviews, you've seen Nico's video, they are going to definitely look after you 100%. I know these guys very well. We have catch-ups all the time and they're a great bunch of people, all right? So they'll look after you. Guys, I hope you all enjoyed that video. If you've got any questions or you want to say hi, share some feedback, just drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear about it. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by hitting that thumbs up button sharing the video with your mates on all your socials, subscribing to the channel, 
And if you like, you can also join me on Facebook by clicking the link above. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Look after your mates, and I'll see you soon. Have a good one.